the whole argument between the two partners mm -hmm. comes from a funding need. That's a, that's the issue. Uh, and the, the 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 situation is that when Paul Telenor entered this uh, venture, Telenor put in six thousand one hundred crore. Mm -hmm. That was the equity that went into the company. Mm -hmm. All that, uh, nothing went to Unitech as a promoter. Not one single. Uh, Rupee, everything went into the company, and this was the money we used uh, initially to roll out our services. Then the plan was that uh, we should fund the rest of the, the funding need through debt. Uh, and we have said that the peak funding is around 15,000 crores. Mm. That, that we also have communicated from the beginning. So the balance then between 6,100 crores and 15,000 crores, the plan was to, to raise debt in India. All that went very well until uh, October 2010, one, one, one and a half year ago, where everything stopped due to the 2G scam. Mm -hmm. So basically, the discussions we had with SBI and other Indian banks just stopped. Mm -hmm. Not only for us, for the entire sector. Uh, and then no more debt was available in, in uh, India or locally, so we had to look at other options. And other other and shareholder shareholder loans is not not allowed either. Mm -hmm. Because Telenor would definitely have been considering that, but it's not allowed only to capex. So and we needed uh, money for the operation. So because of this, we had the only chance we had was to to uh, uh, go for a right issue and put more equity in. Mm -hmm. So the board then decided to raise eight thousand crores in equity. Mm -hmm. All this went through the board. Uh, and, and all this is then regulated actually by the shareholders agreement. Mm -hmm. And then, then uh, Unitech has been disputed this uh, and uh, they tried to get a stay order in the uh, court, which they got. We went above that uh, and got the, the, sh the, uh, the stay uh, lifted. So now the court has said that you should then just proceed in planning for this equity uh, raising. Right. Uh, which we agree. Then you are right, we, we uh, are then also in, uh, in arbitration in Singapore mm -hmm. as a part of this. But until that arbitration process is concluded, we are continuing to prepare for the right issue to happen. We are not going to be consolidated, just mm -hmm. to start state that. Uh, we have a very long term uh, ambition in India and, and uh, our ambition is to be in operational control. Mm -hmm. So you will not see us uh, exiting through a consolidation. And you will not see us being swallowed by a big operator either and just uh, uh, dilute ourselves to be a financial investor. That's not an option. So if we are to go into a consolidation, it's to acquire someone. Mm -hmm. uh, then to your question, there are two regulatory uh, things uh, you need to clarify. One is the M&A rules, mm -hmm. because currently it's not allowed to, to merge. Mm -hmm. And we think the whole industry and also the, the, the ministry is agreeing to changing it. So that, I assume, will come as a part of the telecom plan. Right. That they just will open up for, for consolidation. Mm -hmm. The second one is that you need a clear spectrum policy. Because basically you need to know where, where should I get more spectrum. Mm -hmm. Should I get more spectrum through consolidation or should I get it through auction? Mm -hmm. And then you need to know what will be the mechanism for uh, auctioning spectrum and what will be the mechanism if you consolidate and, and you then get more spectrum. Mm -hmm. Because the main driver for consolidation in India will be one, spectrum, and two will be uh, a network uh, presence. Mm -hmm. Not that much on customers because you know the, the, the churn is so high. Uh, and with an industry churn of more than 10% a month, mm -hmm. the value of the customer base is not the same value as you would have at the other markets. So it's much more a, a spectrum game and a, a network positioning game. That's, that's the, the things that you would, uh, would value in, in, in such a consolidation. Uh, we are now crossing uh, 36 million subscribers. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually this month. Uh, we uh, closed last year with about uh, 25 billion rupees in revenues. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the machine is really, or the organization is really working. 
And I think if uh, we just look at the statistics, if I look at the 13 circles where we are operating, right. in this 13 circle, Union North added 15 million uh, net new subscribers last year. 15.7 million. 15.7 million. Mm -hmm. And if I look at, uh, we were then actually the fourth biggest uh, of all the operators. And uh, even Airtel and Vodafone, yeah. they were sl uh, slightly bigger than us. But even mm -hmm. these two guys didn't add more than 16 million. Mm -hmm. So we were almost taking the same market share last year as uh, the big guys were doing. And that's even better than expected. So the growth of the business, meaning taking uh, market share on subscriber, taking market share on uh, revenues, and climbing up the ladder in terms of uh, uh, the size, relative size. You will see that not only the revenue growth has been quite steady. Mm -hmm. We have been around 18-19% quarter over quarter revenue to Europe. Mm -hmm. But you also see that the cost has come down significantly. And now I see a trend line. Uh, and that trend line is basically, also the, 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 the trend line is now basically uh, point, if, if you can continue the same trend line on the revenue growth and on the cost reduction, we see that these two lines actually can meet each other in the first half of 2013. Mm -hmm. Uh, how, but there are a lot of things uh, yet to be done if, if we want to do that. And I will say that it's, it's the, the cost part, we are ahead of the plans. Mm -hmm. On the revenue side, we are more or less uh, on plan. When I walk on the streets in uh, Patna, mm -hmm. there's absolutely no demand for GG. Mm -hmm. Not even if I walk in the streets of Agra. So, but rural value added services in terms of entertainment services is I think double what the urban uh, contribution to total revenue? That's correct, but do you need 3G to serve those services? It's ringback tones, it's music downloads, mm -hmm. it's chat services, mm -hmm. you don't need 3G technology to do all that. And that is what currently is actually driving the 2G uh, data revenues. So, so that's why it's important for me to distinguish. Also data is not similar to 3G. Mm -hmm. CG is just uh, enabling you to, to have a faster speed or get access to different type of data. But the current market demand on data can be served on Edge or on 2G. Mm -hmm. That's my point. So I, I don't agree to the, us being late commerce on, on, uh, to, on data as today. Two, three years down the, the road, then there will be much more demand for 3G. And what we have seen in other markets is a kind of chicken and egg. Mm -hmm. There is nobody really asking for 3G services before one, you have local content that, mm -hmm. that, that you need 3G speed to, to access. And two, the penetration of smartphone is known to the mass market. Mm -hmm. That's not happening today.